Micron earnings. And uh, I talked about this again twice uh, on, on CNBC. And I would say all in all, it was a mixed bag, okay? There was this excitement that the company essentially said in the memory market, uh, the, the, the demand trough, right, is, is over, right? They said they had increased confidence that the industry passed the bottom for both quarterly revenue and year-on-year -year revenue growth. That, that came directly out of uh, the call, right? They beat on EPS, uh, they met on revenue. Uh, initially, after hours, the stock went up. And then I think as people kind of peeled it back, uh, people looked in and said, okay, so revenue is still off, you know, versus last year by over 50%, right? So let me go down the list of the business units. Compute and networking were down 60, 64%, embedded off 36%, mobile off 58%, and storage off 53%. Uh, there were some really good commentary on AI, right? And uh, the company did a really good job showing uh, how much the order of magnitude memory you need. And oh, by the way, higher performance memory. And then if you look at HBM3, which is driving a lot of these accelerators out there, that's another big adder to, uh, to AI. Um, China, they gave an update on that pretty much sticking to their talking points that they brought out. We covered it on the prior podcast, uh, saying that the the worst part impact is a low double digit percentage of, of worldwide revenue. I'm gonna take that as between 10 and 15%. Not necessarily hitting uh, in, in, in the quarter that was released, but uh, in previous quarters, so that would affect the uh, uh, the outlook. Uh, on one side, in data center, you know, generative AI they talked about is big, but again, everything else in the server market is is blah, right? In fact, they on the call, um, their CEO used the word lackluster. Okay, um, so again, kind of mixed. PCs were what you would expect. Smartphone. Uh, what you would expect. And, uh, you know, my final thing I want to talk about is, um, is risk profile. Investors hate risk, right? And the story of Micron kind of goes like this. They brought industry leading technologies, right? DDR5, HBM3, things like CXL, uh, but demand fell off for end product demand, the smartphones, right? The servers, the PCs, okay? And then all of those manufacturers, right, the Dells, the HPEs, the hyperscalers, right, they reduced um, their finished goods and in some, some instances even returned memory. Okay, this is true for not only Micron, but it's true for Hynix, it was true for Samsung. And what happened is that kicked off a price war between folks, right, that's just now settling down on the memory side. On the call, the company said, uh, memory price degradation went down 10%. Think about that, Dan. Price is going down 10 to 15, 20% a quarter sequentially. Uh, it's tough. And now we have this China risk that, uh, that I really do appreciate them being very crystal clear on what the worst uh, case uh, scenario is. But listen, I'm a believer in Micron. I think Micron is going to do well. I think uh, the r and I'm, I'm hopeful that it doesn't cut you know, down to the bone uh, and cut its um, cut its ability to not only create great technologies and great products, but also you have to market and sell this. So uh, I've seen a lot of companies make a big mistake by cutting all communications off, cutting all marketing spend. And I'm hopeful that the company uh, won't do that because it will backfire. It'll 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 hurt them uh, in a year. But I'm also realistic enough to say, well, the company has negative gross margins right now, Dan. Uh, so you have to make the right cuts. Just make the right cuts, not the wrong cuts. It's easy as a pundit, but don't forget, you know, I spent 12 years as an executive at a chip company. I, I do know how this works. 
And of course, the problem is if you cut too deep, this is a, 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 you know, a boom and bust industry. So you need to cut deep enough that you try to leave yourself in a good position for when the market turn, you know, for the, 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 the austerity portion of a, any, any glut and any downturn. But then again, when it turns, you know how hard it is to bring in talent. And so you have to keep your best talent. You can never cut the PhDs, engineers, scientists, the people that are developing. So then it's where it tends to, to really bleed out is the, is the marketing. And then what ends up happening is the, you make those cuts in the sales, marketing, and some of the operations areas. And then when the market turns, you're, you're, you're chasing your tail. So the companies that can sort of, you know, kind of squirrel their nuts during the uptime and know that you're kind of averaging out yeah. over time tend to do, do to do a little bit better. I mean, Pat, they lost half. They, they basically, they're even, uh, or let's just call it NOI, was like 50% of the revenue uh, in losses. So they had 3.8 billion in revenue or whatever yeah. that was. So, and they had 1.9 billion in losses. It cost them 6 billion to do 4 billion. I mean, that's a pretty remarkable result and not to the good. I mean, just being really candid. Now, I'm not saying Micron doesn't have a great opportunity around AI. I actually believe they do. I believe they have some great innovations, 232 layer NAND, some of the things that they're doing very, very proactive for data center and are going to make them a very compelling partner to many of these new future AI data centers that will all require more memory capabilities. But the business performance, I, Pat, I mean, look, I get it that you did better than you predicted, but <laughs> the prediction was bad and the result was bad. It, you know, given the current market losing $2 billion in a quarter is hard to swallow in any circumstance. But like I said, if the company was communicating well, what they really have done is they had some great quarters during that boom run up and they made a lot of money. And this is the burn to try to keep the company in a good position to be able to capitalize on that next wave. And that's kind of the subplot of what I heard. It's kind of they're, they're, they're in the, they believe the, the, the trough, the worst of the trough is here. And now we're going to start seeing the company rise out of that trough. I mean, clearly memory is not benefiting or accelerating at a rate anywhere close to the GPU space. I mean, their their guidance wasn't even up. It was really just in line. The result was 100 million above expectations. But when you're in multiple billions, that doesn't necessarily look at look to people like a holy crap moment. It's like, OK, it's good. It was good. It was better than we thought. Good. And so. The real question you have to ask about Micron is, do they have the technology and the innovation? I believe so. Is China going to be a huge um, negating factor for the company if, if these sanctions uh, are held up? It's going, to make a, it's going to make a difference. But as, if these U.S. chip makers continue to see the acceleration, they will likely um, be able to offset that. Same as NVIDIA, by the way. NVIDIA is offsetting it because the demand is so swole here in the U.S. They can deal with it. So, yeah. Um, you know, I think Sanjay Marotra came out and said the right things. I think he's in the right place. I think the losses are just, they are what they are. And it's hard to look at them and not be like, Ugh. but the company, if it can turn the corner, if it's played its cards right, if it's built the infrastructure out, memory will scale in parallel at, at a fairly good clip. And then, of course, Pat, as demand rises in this business, prices rise. Demand and price are closely tied. That means margins rise. That means profit rises. And we get out of these discounting wars. And by the way, they also can get out of this by continuing to out-innovate, meaning their, their technology does something the others doesn't. And so when it's all things equal, this industry is incredibly cutthroat. Yeah, we could see a 100-point swing uh, when there's not enough memory. And then we everybody gets mad at the memory suppliers and the storage suppliers when they double their prices. But it's like, look at this negative gross margins, folks. So been covering this for 30 years and there has always been a reaction. There's always been a memory oversupply and a memory undersupply. It's like it, there's never the right amount. It's weird. Like there is no three bears scenario with memory. 